الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده الحمد لله وحده الصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد As we continue 6.51 p.m. Thursday, November 4th, 2021, well, technically, it is the night later to Jum'ah, the night of Friday, in in accordance with the Islamic calendar, of course, the 29th of Rabi'il al-Awwal, the year 1443, the year 1443, one to the fourth. Ah. See, the 29th and the 30th. <laughs> the 39th and the 30th or the 29th, depending on the sight of the moon. But the year 1443 after the migration of our Prophet, Ali Salatu Salam. As we turn in the explanation, the Shah of Al Fatwa Al Hamawi Al Kubra, the great Imam Abu Al Abbas, the PhD, Ahmed Al Abdul Halim, Ibn Abdul Salam, Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimallah, Al Harani, Al Dimishri, the one who died 728 after the migration of our Prophet, and this tremendous, this tremendous tree is entitled Al Hamawiya Al Fatwa Al Hamawi Al Kubra. Well, he continues to say as we stop last class. <coughs> <coughs> he said, وَهُمَّ الَّذِينَ دُعِثَ Ibrahim." I forgot to say that it was on Google Apps, the actual translation that the brother posted. He said, this, what did you say, Muhammad? Where is it? It's on Google Docs. I it's on Google Documents. Yeah, I it's right by the account for, for Masjid and Baz on Twitter. So we have to now put it also with the actual mokha, with the website. And connect it also with the Twitter account. But the translation is there that the brother, Sheikh Ustaz uh, Muhammad, inshallah, put forth for the translation so he can follow on with the book. You see the Google Documents, you said it's in the Twitter account, which is Masjid Ibn Baz on Twitter. It's yeah, I said it this way, I'm not sure you can. Also has to be added to the mobile here. Oh, you found it? MBBSouthPhilly.com MBBSouthPhilladelphia.com And it hit downloads right there. It just hit download. But that's, that's not it. That's not it? That's the same that's one. That's the, one. That's the point of the other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, the other one we'll talk about. We have to sort this out later because I have to focus on the class. Fine. Sheikh Al Islam Tabiri goes on to say, وَهُمَ الَّذِينَ بُعِثَ الْإِبْرَهِيمَ الْخَلِيلِ إِلَيْهَمْ فيكون الجعد أخذها عن الصبي أنت الفلاسفة وكذلك أبو نصر الفارابي دخل حران وأخذ عن فلاسفة الصبيين تمام فلسفته وأخذها جهد أيضا فيما ذكره الإمام أحمد وغيره لما ناظر السمنية بعض فلاسفة الهند وهم الذين يجحدون من العلوم ما سوى الحسيات طيب we were discussing how Jack and Dirham was affected, how he became affected <clears throat> until he adopted the ideologies of philosophy. How did he acquire it? Because we said originally he's the one that started the Jahmiya. The Jahmiya was started by Jack and Dirham, <clears throat> who was the founder, but Jack and Sofwan is the one that made it famous. That's why it was ascribed to Jack and Sofwan due to the fact that he made it famous. Because your father, Shaykh al-Islam, if you look in the book, it says, فَأَظْهَرَهَا فَأَظْهَرَهَا جَهَمْ As we just read this last class, it said, Jahm made it famous, he made it apparent. But he's not the founder, because Jahm had taken his knowledge from who, everyone? From Jack ibn Dirham. Jack ibn Dirham had taken his knowledge from who, as we discussed? Abana ibn Sam'an. Abana ibn Sam'an had taken his knowledge from who? Talut ibn Ukht. 
the beat of the Asam and Talut ibn Ukht took his knowledge from who? The beat of the Asam who's the Sahib, who's the mag- magician <coughs> or the sorcerer <coughs> that did magic upon the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salat. So the origin of or the, or the ideologies of Allah being everywhere, or Allah being not being not being above the, the heavens, above the Aush, goes back to Shayateen, people who were involved in magic in, in the lives. So that's where we find the origins of these people. Returns back to this, which is tremendous. But if you look in, in the book, everyone it says that he had taken knowledge from Asabi Atil Thalasifa. As Ibn Shaykh Shaykh Hussain mentions, he had taken his knowledge from the Sabi of the Sayyid, the philosophical Sayyids. As it says clearly, I just read it. It says, وَهُمْ الَّذِينَ بُعِثَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْخَلِيلِ إِلَيْهِمْ He is the one that Ibrahim, the Khalil of Allah, was sent to them. Who? Who's he speaking about? We just covered this. We said this last class. Ahsan. Namrud. Namrud or Nimrah. Nimrah. And Namrud is the is the is, is who? He is Malik, as they say, he is the king of who? The Sabians. The Sabians. He was the king of the what? Sabians. Even though Shaykh the Sans the last class one of the one, that even though he is as they give him the title of Namrud, we said that Namrud here is it, is it a name or is it Ismail or is it Ismajins? He says, it's Majids, if you look in the book. He says, it's a title for all of them because the kings of the Sabians were more than Nimrud. I mean, it was more than Nimrod. It was more, as we discussed last time. But anyway, just to keep, it, keep us on the, on the point where we discussed it there, that Ibrahim al Khalil was sent to the Sabians, or the Sabians, who from their kings was, who everyone? Nimrod. It was Nimrod. Excuse me, everyone. I wanted to mention something. I wanted to mention a point before I move on. There's something I wanted to mention. No. But what I wanted to mention, for example, <clears throat> The kings of during those, those times, just to mention quickly what we had taken last class. We said, for example, Pharaoh or Fir'aun was, they say, was the king of who? The king of Al Aqbat. Al Aqbat, or the Kibti, or Kibti, or the Aqbat, from the Kufar. But Pharaoh was not the only one king. There was a lot of Fara'i, there was a lot of them. However, his name is, is used as a what? A title for them. Even though he wasn't the only one. He wasn't the only one. He wasn't the only king. Similar to all those different groups. Kisra, Malik al Furs, the king of who? Persia. Same thing. There were a lot of kings and a lot of rulers for them. But however, they, they, their names are put on these type of people for a title for them. Not for the fact, mere fact that they were the only one or that they were the King, that was it. Is it clear? Right. Similar to that is the king of, of, of Yunnan, of Greece. As his name was Bapleimus. Bapleimus of Yunnan. He was a medical of Yunnan. Yunnan is whatever you want to get translated as well. It's Greece, if I'm not mistaken. And Yunnan it was, it was translated as Greece. And the king of Rome was who? Who's the king of Rome? Caesar. 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 Caesar was the king of who? Rome. Jay. These are all, even though they were names, and they were actually people, no doubt, but the titles are put on them, on the groups, the different groups, so they'd be non-Muslims from Rome, uh, Greece, Persia, or Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh being put on the people of Aqbal from Egypt, from the non-Muslims from Egypt. They were used, as we said last class, by titles. 
even though there were plenty, or there were more than what? One ruler for all of them. But the name that had taken as a title for them was that main individual, even though he was not the only one. Or said there was a lot of them for each individual group, as we just said. So I wanted to move on to that. But here, Sheikh al-Islam, if you go back and read the book, it says, Ibrahim was sent to who? Nimrod. Nimrod. Right? Nimrod, same thing. He takes the title of a lot of rulers, even though he was not the what? Only one. But he still takes the title. Right? He said, Jack ibn Dirham had taken his knowledge from the, the philosophical sapiens, who their king was who? Who originated from Nimrod. Nimrod was the originator of the Sabians, of the king of the Sabians. So, just to sum up and keep everything concise, so we can keep it simple, simplify everything, that was just an extra benefit. But just to keep to the, get to the point, that Jared and Nudirahim had taken his knowledge from philosophical Sabians. So that's to show where his misguidance emanated from. Is it clear, everyone? Fine. So share with us that much that. <coughs> then he goes on to say, وَكَذَلِكَ أَبُوا النَّصْرُ الْفَارَابِي He said also from those who was affected by, uh, by logic and philosophy until he became misguided was Abu Nasr al-Farabi. If you look at your book, it says Abu Nasr al-Farabi. That he entered Harlan. Similar to who? Similar to Jack ibn Dirham? Same thing. This is what he says. Shaykh al-Islam. أَخَذَ عَنْ فَلَاسِفَةِ الصَّابِئِينَ تَمَامَ فَلْسَفَةِ That he had taken knowledge from the what? For the, the philosophers of the Sabians. All of his philosophy. And Jahm al Sufwan also did similar to that. So, how many people have taken out from the philosophers from the same Yuzu? How many? Jahm also, who? Abu Nasr al And who else? Who else? Wa Akhdahahu Jahm, Jahm al Sufwan. Awesome. Now look, this is what Shaykh al-Islam to me said, فيما ذكره الإمام أحمد in what the great Imam Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah and Imam Ahmed and other than him mentioned that when he debated, meaning Jahm ibn Sufwan وأخذه الجهم أيضا فيما ذكره الإمام أحمد وغيره he says when he debated with the Sumanian with the Sumanian I'm sorry everyone, I wanted to correct myself the philosophers from Sumanian the Sumania, as we'll talk about, because I want to correct everyone online, pay attention to what I mentioned. Jeff and Sofwan taking his knowledge from philosophers, but they weren't from the Sabians. They were from the who? The Sumania. So correct that. The Sumania is equivalent to who we understand in these days as the Budhiyun, the people of Buddha. Because we know Buddha or Buddhism originated from, from India. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Yes, it did. We'll talk about that in a minute. The Sumania, just to keep in mind, the Sumania is equivalent to what we understand in these days as Buddhism. And so we'll talk about that in a minute. Sumania was ascribed to a city in India, in Hind, which was called Sumanat. If I'm not mistaken, it's still there, but it has another name, if I'm not mistaken. And Imam Ahmed said that Jahim al-Safwan Listen to what he said that he, what made him fall into what he fell into. Listen, look, look clearly and study exactly what he's saying. He said he debated with them. Nawala as Sumania. He debated with the Sumania. He says some of the philosophers of India. Some of the philosophers of India. He says, and they were the ones that denied from knowledge except what could be attained by the senses. They denied everything. That it had to be what? Accessible or attainable by the what? Al-hissiyat. Hissiyat is things that are tangible by the senses. By the what? what? By the ears, by the eyes, by the taste, by what you can feel, touch, see, or look, or taste, 
or what have you. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Later on, we'll talk about how they what? They are similar to the Booth and the Boothiyun, as we'll mention in a minute, inshaAllah. Abu Nasr al Farabi, he had taken knowledge from the philosophers of the Sabians, similar to Jack, who did him. Right, everyone? <clears throat> the thing of Abu Nasr al Farabi, his name was Muhammad ibn, it's easy to memorize this, Muhammad ibn Muhammad. <laughs> that was Abu Nasr al Farabi's name. Nas Muhammad ibn Muhammad. Awzalakh al Turki. Awzalakh. I'll talk about that later and try to give it to you guys later. Al Turki. His books, another individual who went astray, who still has an effect to this day on Uzbekistan, has a heavy influence. His name was Ibn Sina. Ibn Sina. Who was another philosopher? Ibn Sina still to, to this day has a very heavy influence on certain countries. From those countries is Uz Pakistan to this very day. He has a heavy influence on the country. Ibn Sina. Ibn Sina taken, had taken his knowledge from, or benefit, so called benefited from who? From Abu Nasr al Farabi. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? You study from, and take his, his knowledge from the books of Abu Nasr al-Fawabi. All of these were affected by what? Philosophers. Just a quick statement I wanted to mention, in which Ibn Kathir said about Abu Nasr al-Fawabi. He said, What can you call bil ma'ad al-ruhani lal-juthmani? Strange speech. Very, very strange. He said he used to say that the eternal affairs of the hereafter will be by the souls. It will be by the affairs pertaining to the soul returning. And that the, the so called material world is pertaining or, or falling upon the soul, not upon the actual physical. It's extremely strange. So he's saying that it's Al Ma'ad Al Ruhan. That it would be the souls returning, not the actual bodies that are dead returning, meaning it's physical or whatever. They said Juthman. Juthman, or it be in the shape of, of what's physical or whatever. He said a, other, a, lot of, a lot of strange things that are totally in, in regards, or excuse me, rather in contrast to what is to happen. But at any rate, he has a lot of, of ways and, and statements and concepts that imposes the Muslims. Which tells, tells you the danger of philosophy and how effective it is. So, Al Falasifa is from those times of old in which you'll find that he became misguided as a result of it. You'll find that even if he had said about him, if he truly died upon that, then upon him is the curse of Allah to be with that, if that was his ideology. In Kanamat, if he died upon that, Lahmata Rabbil Alameen. He died in Damascus. What Ibn Al Athir mentioned in his, in his tariq called Al Kamil. Your father, even Ibn Asaka, in his tariq, didn't even mention him. He said, due to the severity of his misguidance. He said, Li natnihi wa qabahati. He said, due, due to the severity of his misguidance and how uglified and vilified what he used to believe. So, at any rate, just to sum it up, Ibn Sina. His books, who took, who, take his, who, who took his knowledge from who? Ibn Sina taking his knowledge from the books of who? Abu Nasr al farabi Abu Nasr al farabi طيب. All these are people who are people of philosophy. When you hear these names, you know, as soon as you hear it, you know that there are people who have been affect, affected by who? Philosophy. philosophy. As we mentioned and said, Jahim Dirham, Jahim Sufwan, Abu Nasr al farabi uh, also Ibn Sina and other names that we'll mention as we go along the book. A Sumani, a Sumani, a Sumania is, is ascribed to a city or village in Hind, in India, which was called Sumanat. 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 They were a sect that used to worship idols. 
There was sect that used to worship idols and they used to say and they used to believe what they call Qidam al Alam, like ancient times where there were dinosaurs or what have you. Qidam al Alam. They used to speak about that there will be or there was our ancient times in which we know emanated statements of misguidance from them uh, of man being uh, evolved from monkeys or evolved, evolved from apes. Or there was that ancient time where there were dinosaurs to the end of it. What they called Kidam al Adam. So, this, this was the belief of these people in, in Hind, who were called the Sumaniya. As we believe, we, as we, as Ahl Sunnah, do not believe in what a man evolved from monkeys and apes. We don't believe that. That was the belief, or excuse me, that was the, that was the concept of Charles Darwin. As we know, Charles Darwin was a mason. Charles Darwin was a mason. But anyway, we're going to go side, get sidetracked with that. In regards to those affairs of the Sumania, the Sumania used to, was to believe in what we want, Pidam al Adam. They also used to believe in a whole lot of, of misguidance. Same thing. They would say that nothing is known except but what is tangible by the senses. So that's from their what? Evils. To the point where the majority of them used to deny that, that there will be a hereafter. There will be a ma'ad and that people will be resurrected after death. They also used to believe, and listen to this part, what they call tanasukh al-arwah fi surah al-mukhtalifa. That souls, that they are put inside of what? Different things. Ah. Um, what they call what? Reincarnation. Tanasukhat arwah. And then they will be revived in different what? Shapes. Who is that similar to, everyone? Who do, you, who do you, who will we think that that's similar to? Ahsan. Who is? That's the reason why you will find that Sheikh Muhammad al Jam said the exact same thing. He said, the Sumaniya is a ta'ifatu min al-baltaniyin وَهُمَ الْمَعْرُوفُونَ الْآنْ فِي الْقَارَةِ الْهِنْدِيَةِ وَغَيْرِهَا بِالْبُوذِيِّينَ بِالْبُوذِيِّينَ الْبُوذِيُّونَ هُمَ السُّمَنِيُّونَ بَعْتُ فَلَاسِفَةِ الْهِنْدِ He said, the Sumaniya are Baltini. Baltini. What does Baltini mean? Esoteric? I think that's how they translate it. Esoteric. What is esoteric there? You Clarify that too. Hidden knowledge. People that believe that there's a hidden knowledge yeah. and that outwardly, that outwardly there's, a, there's a apparent meaning, but inward there's something else behind it. Yeah. Or, or the affair of pertaining to the religion is only for the common folk, and then there's another side where it's only for those who are exclusive. Yeah. Those are called balcony. Balcony. And there's other forms of balcony, and there's others. But that's just to give some little bit of clarity. That's Balkany, and they are known today in the what? Al Qalat al Hindiya, which is in, in, in India, and other than them, from those who are now considered who? Buddhists. Buddhists. Budhiyun. So the Budhiyun are the Sumaniyun. Some of the philosophers of India. Study the original Buddhist, where it started from and emanated from. You'll find that it goes back to where? Where does it go back to? It goes back to India. Look at it. Do your research. Do it. You'll be surprised. History puts everything in perspective. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Do your homework tonight. It will not take no more than less than 10 minutes. You will be able to find and trace back that a lot of Buddhism goes back to India. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? I remember I researched this probably maybe five years ago. And I was surprised because when I seen it, I said, Buddhism originally from India? No way. And I read this years ago. And Sheikh of the Sand just mentioned it right here. But, so it says that other than them were called the what? The Sumaniyun. It says, for them they only acknowledge al umur al mahsusa al tuhis. They only acknowledge the affairs that are tangible by 
the hawas by the senses, meaning either by sight or by hearing or by touching or by dhuq, by what can be tasted, or what have you. These are the only affairs they believe in and acknowledge. Other than that, they don't believe in it. This is from their philosophy that Sheikh was saying speaking about here. Is it clear? Is it clear or is it not clear? So now, let's read the paragraph again. Now you see why Ahmed is so beneficial. Now you see it. This book is very beneficial. If we was able to translate it and everybody follow along, you, you will benefit immensely. Immensely from this book. Fight it. Let's read what Sheikh Hussain mentioned together. Again. Fight it. They are the ones who Ibrahim was sent to. Ibrahim was sent to who? The Sabians. Who was the king of the Sabians? Nimrod. Nimrod. Let's talk about Nimrud. However, he's saying that these people were the Sabians who, the, who originally their king was Nimrod, or from the kings of Nimrod. Jad and Nudirham had taken knowledge from them. So that's clear, right? From the Sabian, philosophical Sabian. He says similar to that was who? Abu Nasr al Farabi. Don't tell me it's time for salt already. Wow. Abu Nasr al Farabi, whose name was who? Muhammad ibn Muhammad. Ibn Tarkhan Ibn Al Zalak Al Turki. Allah Akbar Allah Akbar. Allah So these are the affairs that enlighten the Muslims how our beliefs and these type of affairs are detrimental to one's belief as a Muslim. Reincarnation of the souls, or for example, us believing that the hereafter will be spiritual, not physical, to all the different types of, of calls, of shaitan or satanic calls out there. That one, if he doesn't have knowledge, he can be misguided easily if they don't educate themselves. Especially in, in the world of, of education or secular knowledge that they try to incorporate these type of what? Ideas. And for Muslims to learn them and not be able to differentiate between what opposes the religion or what agrees with it, you'd be easily misled. You can fall into the trap and adopt some way that can affect his, his aqidah. And, and meet Allah subhanahu wa meaning Allah subhanahu wa upon that deviation is dangerous. Because the most sacred thing that a Muslim preserves before his good deeds is his belief, his creed. And that good deeds emanate from his sound belief. Right, everyone? Right. So that's the reason why we mentioned and say how this book is very beneficial, especially those who journey into the vast knowledge of, 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 of if they want to, for example, further their education. This type of book will equip, equip them to know what to what, look out for, especially with this type of affairs. In, in this type of level. But, so we said, Jahan al 
The reason for his misguidance, number one, that everyone needs to focus on is that he used to debate. He used to debate. So notice that it, it emanated from where? Munawarat. Debates that used to take place between him and the, between himself and who everyone? In the Sumanian. From the, this is Bakr Falasi Fatilhid. Some of the philosophers of India who are called the Sumanian. For those who they deny, like we said, <coughs> of affairs, uh, of, of those affairs of what we're speaking about now, of, of the different knowledges, they deny and reject it unless it is, it is, it is tangible with the senses, as we mentioned, right? But, so let's keep going. فَهَذِهِ أَسَانِي جَهْرٍ So Shaykh al Islam has put everything in perspective. That this is the narration of Jahl and Sufla. This is how evil it is. And black it is. He said, the chain goes back to the Jews. It goes back to the Yahud. Who is he speaking about when he said the, the Jews? He's talking about the Beed of the Asa. The Beed of the Asa was the one that did magic upon the Prophet that's his chain, right everyone? The chain of Jehovah Sofran, in that chain is a Jew who did magic upon a Muslim, a magician, or a sorcerer. But, so the chain of Jehovah Sofran goes back to Yahu and the Sabi'i, the Sabians. The Sabians and the polytheists and the misguided philosophers. Either, he said they were from the Sabians or either from the Mushriki. I was right actually, I'm correcting myself and I was right. I said the Sumania, and Shaykh Hussam said it, it also was the Sabians. So I was right. I doubt myself too much. Yeah. <laughs> right. So these are the affairs of what was, was correct, what Shaykh Hussam mentioned. So he said this is his chain of Jahim Sofwan. So to let you know, his misguided emanated from old, number one, is debating. Number two, he debated with people who are upon this guidance from the philosophers who are deep in philosophy and this is where, like we said at the start of the atrocities of the Ummah started in regards to the adoption of the Ilm al the adoption of knowledge of rhetoric started from here, the atrocity started from here from Jahid al the, uh, from him taking his knowledge from philosophers and Jahid al Sofwan similar to that is it clear everyone? Is it clear? Is it clear or is it not clear? Fine. So let's move on. So now Shaykh al Islam goes on to say. He says, ثُمَّ لَمَّ عُرِّبَتِ الْكُتُبِ الْعُرُومِيَةِ فِي حُدُودِ الْمِئَةِ الثَّانِيَةِ زَادَ الْبَلَاءُ مَعَهُ مَا أَلْقَى الشَّيْطَانُ فِي قُلُوبِ الْطُلَّابِ ابْتِدَاءً مِنْ جِنْسِ مِنْ جِنْسِ مَا أَلْقَاهُ فِي قُلُوبِ أَشْبَاهِهِمْ وَلَمَّا كَانَ فِي حُدُودِ الْمِئَةِ الثَّانِيَةِ انتشرت هذه المقالة التي كان السلف يسمونها مقالة الجهمية بسبب بشر بن غياب المريسي أو المريسي وطبقته وكلام الأئمة مثل مالك. So now, Sheikh Islam is talking how the origin of philosophy creep within the Ummah and how these affairs started. So now, so notice he's adding another affair. He's talking about the origins of Jahm al-Sufan, the origins of Jahm al -Dirham. Now he's speaking about <clears throat> how these atrocities were now adopted. Where did they come from? So this is looking about. He says, when the, <clears throat> when the books of Rome were Arabized, meaning that they were translated into Arabic from, from, from their language into what? Arabic? He says, I'm sorry, Muhammad. I'm sorry, he was reading it. I'm sorry, I forgot to. I forgot that you translated it. I was reading Arabic, I forgot to. I forgot to say it. Can you read it for me? I'm sorry. I lost track of thought, I can translate it. Well, you, you can't find it. You lost track of No, you know how my phone is. Oh, shut off. From when the book, the Roman books of Rome were Arabized, or they were translated into Arabic. Um, furthermore, when the books of the Romans were translated into the Arabic language during the end of the second century, 
During the end of what are one? Which century? Hudud al Miyat al Thani. I'm sorry. Follow. That added to the tribulation that the devil already cast into the hearts of the people of misguidance to begin with. These are the, these are the same. So, Lord Sheikh al Islam said that all these ideas came from who? Shaitan. It came from the devil. It came from the unseen devil. He inspired these ideas. Everything was inspired by him. I talked about this last class about a month ago. What happened to, with Yahya Zimmi? As I talked about that other, right? Yahya Zimmi, who seen a shaitan, his name was Abu Murra. His name was Abu Murra. And he said that I left a Khalifa. He said, well, if I knew you was here, I would have came here. Can you imagine that somebody seen the shaitan or a jinn, they probably would have fainted, passed out from fear. This is how the salaf went. The salaf, top of Allah was so high to the point they see a jinn, to the point where they say, what are you doing here? What do you want? <laughs> Yaqa Zimmi said, what do you want? What are you doing here? To the point where even the jinn said, if I knew you were here, I would have came here. <laughs> He said, well, what are you doing here? What, what do you want? He said, I came from, I came from Maru, or the lands of, I think it's Maru. We'll talk about this in a minute, inshallah. Either Lay or Maru. He said, I came from there and I have a Khalifa. Who's your Khalifa to this guy, the people? Bishop Merisi. Right here in the book. He said, I love a Khalifa for the Muslims to be misguided by. To be misguided. And his name is Bishop Merisi. So to let you know that the Shaytan was inspiring who? That individual. To misguide the people that Shaykh al-Islam is mentioning right here in these lines. Is it clear everyone? Fire. So that's what we're going to mention right now. He said Shaytan when he cast it in Qulub Ashbahihim. In the hearts of those who are similar. Meaning who's inclined towards that same misguidance. Whether it be from the affairs of philosophy or the affairs, <coughs> the affairs, affairs of philosophy, and logic, and rhetoric, those matters, and those who have the same inclinations that Shaitan tried to cast in the heart of those people, regardless of what was their what, what was their origin or what country and nationality came from. I'm sorry, uh, Muhammad Tafaba. But how all this had taken place, where everyone at the end of where? At the end of the second century, at the end of the second century, does that mean at the end of, does that mean at the end of a hundred such and such hijri or two hundred such and such hijri? What is that? Which one? I said it. At the end, at the end of the hundred of such and such century. When you say the third century, usually means what? The one that came before. Yes, it does. We say century of the third century, that means in the 200s. Is it clear? Is it clear, everyone? Great. Keep reading. Furthermore, when the books of the Romans were translated in the, in, in the Arabic language during the end of the second century, that added to the tribulation that the devil already cast in the hearts of those who of the people of misguidance to begin with. These are the same doubts that were cast in the hearts of those who, whose hearts were similar to them. During the end of the second century, these statements began to spread and were termed by the Salaf as the statements of, J of Jahan. They spread it by way of Bishop, uh, Bishop uh, Ibn Diyal and Marisi and his comrades. And the speech of the Imams of this religion, like the likes of Malik, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, ibn Mubar, Abi Yusuf, Ahmed. Uh, All of those are the Ashab of Imam al Hanifa. Or the Ashab al Imam al Hanifa from the Ashab of Abu Yusuf. And his name is who? Ya'qub Ibrahim. Ya'qub ibn Ibrahim. And also who everyone? Abu Yusuf. And also we'll talk about Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani. It's also from Ashab Abi Hanifa. We'll talk about that in a minute. Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani. It's also from Ashab al Imam Abi Hanifa. We'll talk about that in a minute. But concentrate on the names that Shaykh al-Islam is mentioning here. So he's saying, these affairs of Jahan and Sufwan 
to creep to these people. So, Shem was saying, let's talk about one atrocity. The first atrocity was who? Jehud Medina and who? Jehud Sofwan. Then towards the, uh, the, the other century that he's speaking about, there came other atrocities that built upon those. So just the mere fact of Jehud Medina and Jehud Sofwan, those in itself was tremendous. That affected the Ummah. Because it was the first adoption of the Muslims being affected in a creed as far as adoption of what? Ilm al kalam Of adopting what? The knowledge of rhetoric, the philosophy, and its concepts. Is it clear, everyone? Even though they're not considered the first sects in, in Islam, they're not. But they were the first sects that were affected by Ilm al kalam By Ilm al kalam by the knowledge of rhetoric, meaning philosophy and the like. The first groups of deviant sects in our religion is who, everyone? It was the Ruafid and the Khawarij, or Shia and the Khawarij. Who came first? The Khawarij. The Khawarij came first. The Khawarij, as the Tariq, the first deviant sect in our religion was the Khawarij. Why? Because of the originator, originator of the Khawarij, who was Dul Khwaisr al Tamimi. That he himself lived during the time of the Messenger of Allah, so he came to him and said, Ya Muhammad, i'da fa inna kallam ta'da. Oh Muhammad, be just, for verily not just, in, in, in regards to the distribution of, of the money in the, in, the, in the war movie, what happened? That was the, the one who founded the Khawarij, who's Dhul Khwaisir tamimi Then came after that was who? The Khawarij, who was the fitna in which caused the other weakness amongst the Muslims. The other weakness amongst the Muslims was weakened by Dhul Khwaisir, who's the Khawarij, which is the fitna of the Muslims today, and the Shia. The Shia also developed or they started when during the time of who? Ali ibn Abi Talib. To the point where they made him a deity. Is it clear everyone? Ali ibn Abi Talib, where he gave them three days to make Tawbah from their evil statement that he was a deity of worship. If you look to his time. But anyway, so it goes to that word. You have what everyone? Number one, the Khawarij. They were the first group in the sect in Islam that deviated in the affairs of belief. It's the Khawarij, who start by who everyone? Dul Khwaisira wa Tamimi. Number two was the Khawarij. Excuse me, the Shia. The Shia emanated or they came out when? When did they manifest? Ta'ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib. Then who came after that, you'll find that they say, Ilm al Kalam. Was who? Or was it the Qadriyyah? Was it the Qadriyyah then the Ilm al Kalam? Or was it the Ilm al Kalam then the Qadriyyah? We'll talk about that later. But anyway, as far as adoption of Ilm al Kalam, of philosophy and rhetoric and the likes of those matters, they're the ones that started that atrocity. Jahm, 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 to the end of it. After that, the, the affair became. Worse it became worse when it when it when it excelled to the to the level where it was adopted by this individual who's inspired by the devil, meaning the unseen shaitan, who was his name is as you see here written, who's his name, everyone? Bishop Ibn Riyaf al Mirisi or al Marisi al Baghdadi. He was from the Mawali, from the free slaves of Ali Zaid Ibn Khattab. Umm al-Khattab, Ibn al-Khattab. Bishop Mirlisi used to be from the Kibar al-Fuqaha. Used to be. Notice I said the word used to. Kibar al-Fuqaha. Kibar al Kibal al-Fuqaha. He had taken knowledge from Al-Qadi Abi Yusuf, who was from who everyone I said, Abu Yusuf is who? Min Ashab Abi Hanifa. So he did take from Ashab al Hanifa from them was Abu Yusuf. He also had narrated upon the uh, Imma from them, Hamad ibn Salama and Sufyan ibn Uyayna. However, look to where he deviated. He started reading books of rhetoric and not in philosophy. He took it, it overtaken him. When Salakha bin al-Wara' with Taqwa. Then it says that he ripped off the affairs of Wara' 
<laughs> of water, of piety, and fear of Allah, until he was dragged inside of the pitfall of shaitan by calling to the Qur'an being created. And he started calling to it. To the point where they say they used to make evil statements such as, Subhani Rabbi al-Asfal. He used to say evil statements such as, Glory be to my Lord, the one who's below. That's how his guidance had penetrated his heart to reach this extent of blackness and evil. And so what was narrated upon him used to say, Subhani Rabbi al-Asfal. Glory be to my Lord who's below. You'll find that this is what he used to call him. Until he was the Ayn of Jahmiyyah during his time. He was accurately, or he was the people who adopted the, the ideologies of the Jahmiyyah during his time, and he was knowledgeable. Until the people of knowledge, the people of knowledge detested him, and a, and a lot of the ulama declared him to be outside the form of Islam. <clears throat> Even though he did not reach the time of Jahmiyyah al Safwan, where he actually took direct knowledge from him. <laughs> However, <coughs> excuse me, everyone. He died at the end of, as they say, Mi'atay with Samani Ashram. And then he died at the time was about 218 after the Hijrah of the Messenger of Allah, that's when he died. <coughs> they used to call him Bishop Ashara. There was another person from Ahl Sunnah whose name was Bishop. Bishop, but they used to call him Bishop Hafi. Bishop Hafi, I'll talk about him in a minute, inshallah, the great Imam. Bishop Al Hafi, they used to call him Bishop Al Khair. Bishop Al Hafi is who we know as Abu Nasr al Marwazi, the great Imam. However, we'll talk about in the next class of some of the Shatahat al Sufiya by some of those who will speak about of. The Imam of the past from them was called the Iyab. From them was also Bishop Hafi, known as Abu Nasr Mawazi. We'll talk about that in the next class. About the little bit of Sufia they were affected by, but it wasn't to the point where they were considered the people bid'ah, rather they were considered the people the Sunnah. And we'll talk about that next class. However, no one can utilize the same excuse for those Imam, similar to what people have felt into today, due to the fact that all the affairs of the Sunnah have been gathered. All the narrations are there in the books. So, no one could go around and say, we can take from the people Bidah, due to the fact that these scholars of the past were affected a little bit by Sophia. So, there's no problem. We could go to individuals who have been affected and take knowledge from them. That we'll speak about next class. Because that's all false. But in regards to them, we have to clarify what happened. With the great uh, Imma from them, is a and uh, and also, who we're speaking about now, I'm sorry, everyone. Who's Bishop Hafi, whose name was Abu Nasr al Barwazi. Let's we'll speak about that later, inshallah. But anyway, just to read quickly what Shaykh Islam mentioned, and we'll stop. It said that the affairs of the Jahmiyyah were adopted and hit in the time of Bishop al Hiyat al Barisi and his companions, or those who were with him. And that the A'imma spoke out, and from them was the great A'imma, from them was the Imam Malik, Ibn al Anas, Ibn Malik, Ibn al Ibn Amr ibn Amr al Usquhi Imam Dal Hijrah. And who spoke out against him was Sufyan ibn Riyana. And who spoke out against him was Abdullah ibn Mubarak. And from those who spoke out against him was Abu Yusuf al Qadi, Min Ashab al Imam Abi Hanifa, also the Imam al Shafi'i, also the Imam Ahmed, also the great Imam Ashab ibn Allah Huay, also the Fudayl ibn Iyad, with Bishr al Hafi. Those Shaykh of Islam said Bishr al Hafi. Who's Bishr al Hafi? We'll talk about that in a minute. That's Abu Nasr al Marwazi. Bishop Hafi. We'll talk about that in the next class. Because a person will read this book, and if a person is really knowledgeable about these people, they'll say, Fudayl al Iyab and Bishop Hafi and Abu Nasr Sufi. How do you answer that? You need to know that. We'll talk about that in the next class, inshallah. We'll talk about that in the next class. He said, and other than that, from those who are what? Plentiful. Condemned Bishop Mirlisi. And declared him, declared him, and those who were upon his way, mis, misguided. Fine, right, let's stop here, inshallah. Any questions about the lesson, anyone? Tafadda, Abdul Hamid. You said something about the uh, people of India, they, 
originated belief in dinosaurs or something like that. No, that was just called Kidam al Adam. So what the, is the, world, the ancient world, the time of the old times, or the old ancient times. So what do we say about the dinosaurs? I don't believe in them. Hmm? We don't believe in them. No. At all. The ancient times. No. Because Adam came and there were Absolutely. There. Cavemen. That meant that human beings evolved from apes and monkeys. All that's nonsense. So it originated from India. No, we no 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 not specifically. That's just to say generally. I don't know what was exactly in which type did they believe that human beings were cavemen, or did they believe? I don't know the specifics. We just say generally they used to believe what they call Pidam and Adam, the, the the old ancient times of the world. The specifics I don't know. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying this. Just keep it keep it like that. Because us as Muslims, we don't believe in that. We don't believe that Muslims or human beings. The cavemen, they used to beat up on women's heads and drag them. And then they, they, they evolved from monkeys and apes. We don't believe none of that nonsense. That was originated, like we said, from people with theories such as Charles Darwin. And like I said, Charles Darwin was a mason. He was a mason. Charles Darwin was a mason. And he didn't even believe that nonsense himself. He didn't even believe that. Charles Darwin didn't even believe that nonsense. It was just a, a smokescreen to throw everyone off. And people who study those affairs in college, they think this education is absolute nonsense. It's just to so-called impress people that, oh, I'm educated, or you don't know that originally human beings were, had, were monkeys or they came from cavemen, they used to smack them upside the head and drag them from our cave and it's all that other nonsense that we do not believe. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? We don't believe that. It's a waste of time. And like I said, the person who actually wrote that theory, he didn't even believe it himself. So why would you believe it? Charles Darwin was a mason. You'd be, be surprised on how many people were masons out here. You'd be surprised. There was a lot of people who were masons. Muhammad Abdul was a mason. Uh, Hassan Benda was a mason. Hassan Benda started the Ikhwan al-Muslimin. He was a mason. And still to this day, a lot of people who have found deviation in this city are masons. A lot of them. People who have found deviation in this city. People who's heavily involved in music, in the music industry, they're masons. Anything else to fuck with that? Ibrahim alayhi salam, what nation was he from? Ibrahim? Yeah, because he was sent to the Sabians, but I, every prophet was sent to the old people. Was he? He wasn't Sabian, was he? You know, I, well, I, I can't speak on that. Allah knows best. He was from the Iraq region, but yeah. that's Iraq now, that region. Mm -hmm. right. But I wouldn't say he's a savior. No, That's no, no, but he, was from, he came from that region. Dream. Yeah. But I would say he's a savior, Allah, I don't know. I don't know. Allah, 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 that day. Anything else, anyone? Follow up. Right, just a quick synopsis, for sure. I just, uh, we, we went pretty far in the book of Ahmed. Just, uh, just uh, you know, uh, synopsis of why this book, book is so important and how does it tie into what we see today as far as. Some deviation in this city and in general on Muslim. How's the book tie in? Man, there's an answer that I could go for 10 minutes, maybe 20. Number one, Hamawiya, the, the topic of this book revolves around the nature and attributes of Allah. That's number one. That's the origin of this book. The names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the affairs that was called al sifat al khabariyya The characteristics that we didn't have any knowledge of except through the revelation. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the characteristics of hand, face, and those attributes that we will have no knowledge of knowing about it unless Allah revealed it to us. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the characteristics of asabir, fingers, hands, and that Allah grips with, with that hand, grips, and gives those affairs, we will have no knowledge of it through the aql. We have no knowledge of it through our minds. All of that is through revelation. So the whole mudu or the topic of this book revolves around that affair. So that's number one. So it's to correct the Muslims and their beliefs as far as the names and attributes of Allah that was conveyed through the revelation. 
which is what they call a sifat al-khabariya, the characteristics that was informed through, through the revelation. Or you could call it, I'm sorry, a sifat al-khabariya, which was conveyed through al-adillat al-khabariya, which was conveyed through the evidence from the knowledge of kitab and sunnah. Or you could call it adillat al-khabariya. Or you could call it al-adillat al-sam'iya. Or you could call it adillat al-naqliya. You could call it all of that. Adillat al-naqliya, adillat al-khabariya, and adillat al and adillat al al-sam'iya is just evidences from the kitab and sunnah. That's it. That's what it means. Those evidences, we would have no knowledge about those characteristics of Allah unless Allah informed it, uh, informed it and conveyed to us to the message of Allah through the authentic narrations. So that's the whole topic of this book, and that's how it's very important to the Muslim to teach them the foundation about their Lord in regards to the names and attributes that he has, that he's revealed to us. Number one. So you see the importance of the book, it starts from there. Is it right? Is it clear so far? So I'll just stop there because I can go on to, to other benefits, right? but that, I think that's the main point right now. Just number one. <laughs> so that's just to remind people of how important this book is, and it contains other benefits. So we'll talk about the other ones next class, inshallah, or next class. It also comes to allow us to realize the importance of these books. And also, like I said, in regards to people who want to further their education, especially in college, because a lot of people when they embark upon secular knowledge, shaitan usually tricks them because they think that they, they reached a certain level, not realizing that a lot of those concepts they embark upon affects their belief as a Muslim. And shaitan decorates their intelligence to the point where, like you said, one, if he's not careful, he can fall into one of these atrocities easily, especially in college, especially with the non Muslim uh, secular knowledge that they disseminate. You can easily fall into one of these, these pitfalls and traps. Easily. If you're not careful. So that's the reason why we also teach the book, especially for those who want to further their education. And they now put these different curriculums where you might have in it a topic that's pertaining to philosophy. Or whatever. And history. Because a lot of history and affairs connected with astronomy. Astronomy. Especially if a person wants to be an engineer. Because affairs of astronomy has a lot of polytheism in it. It does. A lot of people don't know that. Being an astron astronomer, affairs are tied in with the stars, especially what we believe as we were taught children. We believe that the sun is in the middle of the solar system, and that the sun is still and the planets revolve around it. Where do you think that ideology came from? It came from the polytheists. It came from the polytheists because they used to believe that they used to worship the sun, the astronomers, and the astrologers. They were polytheists and they used to glorify the sun. So they say that's the biggest thing in the middle. Everything else glorifies it. So it goes around it. Because the original astronomers were what? Astrologers. <laughs> the astronomers were astrologers. Astrologers who believed that the stars had some effect on mankind. Either in their life, individually, or generally over the people. Or different catastrophes or storms or predictions of certain things will take place over here, the, 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 the people's lives will be, uh, will be uh, for example, uh, affluent here, maybe meaning that they don't have a lot of children, a lot of wealth based upon the position of this star, and the, based upon this position, that means this land is going to face a lot of catastrophes, a lot of rain, earthquakes to the end of it. That's all polytheism. It's not permissible. It's shit. So they put, so now, a lot of those astro astrologers, as we said, uh, excuse me, a lot of the astronomers, as we said, are astrologers. So, they used to believe in what? They used to believe that the sun was a type of what? A celestial being that was very powerful. Because they used to worship the sun, some of them. They used to worship the sun. So that's the reason why, what do we learn as children when we were little kids? What we used to see on the, on, the, on the little classroom maps, the sun is the biggest thing, and the, and the planets are little, and they revolve right around it. Which was a type of polytheistic methodology that was from the pagans, from the astrologer, from the astronomers, who were astrologers in its origin, they used to worship the sun. Because our belief is that the sun, what? The sun moves. Not, not the opposite. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the sun moves. That's what we believe. We believe the sun moves. 
And it's not the opposite. The earth doesn't revolve around the sun. Rather, the sun moves. And, and it comes in authentic narrations that the sun, that it sets under the arsh of Allah every day. Which comes to Sahih Muslim. And one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, go back. And that's when the sun will rise from the where? West. It will sun rise from the west. We'll talk about that later. Tell you, anything else? Anything else? We'll stop here, inshallah. Next week. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa barakatuhu ala Muhammad wa ala 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 ala